there's a new kid on the block, or in this case, a political party, the People's National Party. On the 18th of June this year, the newly formed party announced it had received a provisional certificate from the Electoral Commission, made up of disgruntled national executives of the People's National Convention, PNC. More than a dozen regional officers of the party also defected to the PMP, all made possible because of internal wranglings. Many officers of the PNC have since been rebranded to PMP. This ouster, however, appears to set the tone for more litigation. Today on the program, we ask, what's next? Did the PNC die to burst the PMP? Or is this party coup only the beginning of more controversy? I am Kemeni Amano and today I sit with the woman who has been at the center of the confusion and litigation. She has fended off her male contenders who have described her as problematic and insubordinate. She returned from suspension to lead the defectors as a PNP party chairperson. My guest on Hot Issues is Janet Asana Nabla, chairperson of the PNP. You're welcome to uh, Hot Issues. Grateful to be here. Indeed, you're perhaps in, in this fourth republic, the only uh, the second female uh, chairperson for a nationally recognized political party. Uh, that, mu that must mean something to you. Yes, I feel grateful, thankful to God. And truly, it is very difficult to be a woman and a woman, uh, to be in politics as a woman. Mm. So it has not been easy. It's very challenging. It's very difficult. And I'm not surprised that a lot of women are running out away from politics because the pressure, the tension out there is unbearable. Mm. Especially if you're a woman and you want to go to the top, they will throw stones at you. They will do anything to make sure that they pull you down. The place for women in Ghana's politics is for you to be under them. Either you are a women's organizer, a deputy, just under them. That Who one, they are them? okay. I mean, uh, the political, the way our, forma the formation of our, uh, uh, the formation, the formation mm -hmm. of the political parties. Mm. They're like we have charm, uh, like the chairperson's position mm. is supposed this to is go to uh, uh, the general secretary, a man. A organizer, a man, communication secretary, a man, all must be men, 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 except the women's organizer's position. Mm. And even that one, whilst you are in a neck meeting and it's crucial, crucial decisions are being taken, they will tell you to get out of, go and look for food and water for them because that was the reason why that position was given at the first place mm. for you to look, for, uh, find them food and water whenever they are tasty or when they are hungry. Mm. So um, it's not easy being a woman and it is difficult and if you want to i mean perhaps the women also don't want these positions w women don't find themselves to be actively involved in politics sometimes even when they're given the chance because of the discouragement when i was a women's organizer and wanted to become the general secretary i had calls from big wings including my own family telling me that mm -mm, that place is not a place for a woman mm -hmm. you cannot you can't make it especially the people you are contesting with why don't you maintain your women's uh, organizer's position? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. If I did not, like, persevere, I wouldn't have been able to uh, succeed. Mm -hmm. But I had to, like, ignore all, those, all uh, those advice. Let's talk about the PMP. You have a provisional certificate? Yes. So my guess is that uh, this provisional certificate, at the time it was announced, uh, was only about a week when you received it from the Electoral Commission? No, okay. we received it on Tuesday and we announced it this On Tuesday, Th this Tuesday? Yes. So then, um, if we go by the Formation of Political Parties Act, right, you then applied to be a political party seven days earlier? No. Oh, how long has About it been? About two months now. Two months now? Yes. I see. It was on the, I think that was the, on the 9th, 9th of, uh, was it 9th of April? It was April that we started the preparation. I see. That was 12 or something of 9th, immediately after the court ruling. At what point did you get to the realization that oh, we want to, you know, form our own political party? You know, uh, political parties have rules and regulations called a constitution. 
And anyone who joins that party must follow the constitution. So when someone breached the constitution and then the party took action against that person, the person went to court. And unfortunately, the judge uh, reinstated the person and dismissed the person who the party wants. So it was shocking, you know, that a judge have no right to tell a political party who should be their leader. Mm. So the party left. We left. I, uh, say it again. The party left. The party what, left. What do you mean by the party 11 left? regions that they left, left the PNC. We said um, we can no longer, we can't allow a judge to tell us who should become our ruler. Because uh, if a party says that we cannot work with this man, because, and we have a constitution that says that when nine regional chairmen are in a meeting, when you have two thirds of the people attending the meeting, you have a, a chairman to chair the meeting, NEC was duly constituted. On the other hand, mm. he went to form a NEC meeting. He could not get nine regional chairmen to attend his NEC meeting. Uh -huh. So slow down so that we can, we can put everything into perspective. Because for those who are hearing this issue for the first time, they may not know who the, the he and, and the thems are. So, mm. so, so let's, let's start again, right? Um, there was an issue within the party, internal yes. wranglings that had begun from 2020. Yes. It began with your suspension. Exactly. Okay. I was there when I heard that I was suspended. So without even, I'm the general secretary. A neck meeting cannot happen without my knowledge. I was ignored. And then the neck meeting was conducted. The neck members rejected the meeting. And then he still went ahead and, he, he being, I mean, David Apasara, mm -hmm. he still went ahead and said he has suspended me. So I reported him to the National Executive Committee who called him to come and tell them the processes he passed through to think that what he did was neck. He rejected it, and as a result, he was suspended. You, he, you also formed another quorum to suspend him. I did not. The neck formed its own quorum. In fact, when neck was going to call him, I was not part. I was also given a letter to appear there. So I also appeared and gave my side of the story, and he wasn't there. So they passed judgment on him. Upon passing judgment on him, he took us to court mm. and finally withdraw, withdrew the court uh, processes, went back to court, withdrew, uh, was just doing that. And then the party got angry and then uh, uh, dismissed him from the uh, party. Okay. Because the constitution of the party says that if you have problems and you cannot use the internal mechanisms to solve your differences, then you, they can expunge you out of the party. Right. So and if, the party, if the party dismissed him, uh, David Apacera, the yes. 2020 presidential candidate, yes. from it. Why then are you leaving the PNC? The judge is a judge who sacked me from the decision. A judge. The judge only upheld your 20... He your... upheld it on what basis? No, hang on. The judge upheld your indefinite suspension. And I'm saying and that... And then you decided to cause no, a No, no, no. It's not like that. It's not like that. Okay. There was no any indefinite suspension. And we told the judge. He did not... He said, yes, he did not do it. Why is it that when they called me, I didn't appear? That is why he is saying that he is holding it. Well, why didn't you no, appear? No, you ask him. No, I cannot appear when aliens are calling me to appear before them, calling themselves disciplinary committee, when I know by the party standards that they are not disciplinary committee members. Mm. So that is why I refuse. With everything we said, they just said that he is holding. Even if you are upholding what? What he did was illegal according to our constitution. And I was expecting the judge to look into it. But he said that he is going for some strange reasons. He did that. So, and a, a judge cannot appoint a leader for a political party. Absolutely. So, we have just shown the judge that if you don't look painstakingly into issues mm. and you take decisions in favor of others, right. at so the end of the day, there are uh, measures we can also take. Although we don't have power over you as a judge, we have other powers that we can take that your decision will end up meaning, becoming not relevant because to, to now we don't even and, care. And that's why you organize the coup. We never organize a coup. So, I was home when I heard that the neck members they met and that uh, they were going to do some they were here for three days and then the last day i, w I went to the, them they called me and i came and they told me that they want me to take this position blah 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 they will not work with a, a, a pasara who have gone and then a, a judge has given him a ruling that they think that ruling was unfair unjust and not supposed to be accepted so it will not be accepted so it's not like i i i formed a coup it was the party. But, but, but you can't help but think that it's an ouster because <laughs> you, you are still using uh, facilities of what used to be PNC. You have only rebranded 
them to People's National Party? The, the facilities you are talking about, uh -huh. for instance, our new uh, party office, the PNC, they have a two-bedroom apartment at uh, Abavana. You are all aware. You've been going there. The place we have, we have seven beds, seven decent, a whole decent to ourselves. We never took any of the addition. The only thing we took was things that belong to us. For instance, if you're a chairman of a PM, a PNC and you gave the party a head of a decent, um, a, an office, and now you are no more with them, you are now with PMP, won't you take your, uh, your building away? Because they did not pay you for it. It mm. was freely given. So those people have taken back their property. And given it to and, the PMP. Yes, and have changed the C and put P there. It, so, sounds, it's, it's, it sounds, sounds like a rebranding <laughs> than a new political party. It's a new political party. It's a new political party with new ideologies. And uh, it's a new political party. We'll get into those ideologies. Mm. But back to the roots uh, cause of this issue. The reason you were, um, you know, indefinitely suspended. You say you were not suspended because the quorum was illegal. Mm -hmm. But you know, for Moses uh, Danny Bar and David Apasera at the time, you were indefinitely suspended for gross misconduct, insubordination, and and financial malfeasance. Hmm. Do you know the financial mal malfeasance? Talk to me about it. I was it. there when uh, City called me that. The two of them have brought a letter that they should publish it that I have stolen 30 million uh, uh, Ghana cities. Uh, no, 30,000 Ghana cities. So I said, no, it's not true. So they said, we'll give you an opportunity. So I was there in the evening time, they called me, and I told them that the electoral commission owed us some money so, because we performed above the threshold. So they were about to give the money to us. Mm -hmm. And I told them not to put it into our co a party's coffers. Because whenever money enters into the party coffers, it doesn't come back. So uh, we said, I told them that don't put it there because uh, we had a lot of money that we kept into that party coffers. And they went and withdrew all the monies, even though I wrote letters to a, a SGSSP telling them I'm a general secretary. How can a, a Pasada and David Daniba look down in, a, on my office to come and withdraw up about 1.7 million? Mm. from our account without my knowledge and then they told me you see the bank that uh, because uh, uh, they can't do anything about it that was what the bank told me I see. the national executive committee wrote a letter to the bank that we are the heads of this decision we, we object to what they are doing the, the bank refused and we're working with them so when the 30 million was coming our party head office was not paid we were not we were owing the landlord our regional party offices we were, we were owing so I knew that if they send the money to that uh, coffers, it will turn into a Christmas bonanza. When money enters into that uh, coffers, we don't know where it passes to, no accountability. Electoral Commission was following me to bring our financial uh, this, uh, accounts on what we did during the election period. I followed him mm. to help me. The reason why they suspended me was not because of anything, was because I demanded that a letter commission, they should give me accounts to what they use the 1.7 million. That is the reason why mm. they, they did what they did. So when the 30 million came, I used it to pay our party head office two years. I even gave all the regional, this in, on, the, on our platform, mm. national executive platform, they were there. So I told them the money has come. This is what we have done. Blah, 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 equals no, to 30,000. Did, did you have the authority to disperse that amount? Uh, do they have the authority? As a general secretary, mm. if I don't have that authority to take care of administrative things, who I mean, what, what's, a, 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 but, but what's the party process? No, so the, the, party, process? the party uh, process, the uh, general secretary is in charge of. After elections, they don't have any this in anymore. I'm in charge. But after elections, they were still holding on to some powers that they were not supposed to hold on to and doing whatever they want. Mm. So the money, I had the power as a general secretary to do what I did to the this I, Because it was even the, because I, I know that the, the PNC had amended this constitution at some yeah, point. Yeah, and giving to, some powers to no, the no, general no, no, secretary. Let, let me finish. The PNC had amended this constitution at some point to ensure that uh, the national chairman and the office of the uh, you know, the presidential candidate uh, merged so that the presidential candidate can focus on uh, elections while the national chairman focuses on mm -hmm. uh, issues to do with the party. So where, where, no. where do you then Even derive... Even all political mm -hmm. parties in Ghana is the general secretary that is in charge of I know. Uh, the day-to-day. -day. Um, the I'm, constitution I'm says that... I'm the, okay, the mm -hmm. PNC constitution mm -hmm. has stated that the general secretary 
is the chief executive officer of the party. Okay. So I'm in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. What I did was not unlawful. It was the unlawful. only reason why it was paining them, look, even if you're a leader and then uh, you realize that money was spent for specific things that were in, de in mm -hmm. dire need, mm -hmm. as a leader, you will do what? The money was not hidden. On the platform, this, I told them, look, when I took the check from Electoral Commission, he uses persuasions, oh, Janet, pay it into the account, eh? so that when it matures, I refuse because I know them. That's what they do. do. When we go to take money, mm -hmm. they will tell me, Janet, let us put it in the party or office, eh? a coffee, eh? then we'll know what we, to do with the money. And I said, okay, when they put it, they will turn around and take everything. Were they stealing from the party? Ah. That is uh, to me, dear, because if we don't know uh, why you, you went into the party's coffers, the, the chief executive officer of the party is not aware and you pick it, it's stealing. That is what I thought. Mm -hmm. And when I took my money, I never uh, hid it. Mm -hmm. I told all of them, plus the National Executive Committee, they were what, and what we were going to do. So that, and that is the reason why they said they were going to suspend me. The second one was... Insubordination we, and insubord gross misconduct. The second one, I asked somebody that I need... A, a rice for those who are Muslims and they are fasting. Mm -hmm. The person finally gave me the rice. I should have, I, I, I could have kept quiet without telling them and they would never have known. I called you immediately, I got it. About eight or something, seven minutes later, I called you. Oh, I've gotten 50 bags of rice. So um, I was hoping if you can tell me where and where we should send them to. Mm. She said that, oh, uh, you, I said, so Monday, since it's Friday, Monday, I said, okay. The same evening, he went and told the one person from uh, West, uh, this in Upper, East, uh, Upper West region, their secretary, right. that I took 30, uh, 40, uh, 52 bags of rice plus an undisclosed amount of money. The guy came with an audio on the platform. Lie, there was no any lie this guy did not uh, instigate. And now you know that when people hear rumors, then people started, hey, how can you go and pick rice? How can you go and pick money without... Mm. Who told the man, the guy? That is one of the issues I have with him. As leaders, no matter what, you must have something called secrecy. No matter what. Mm -hmm. If you're a leader and you have an okra map, you are not worth it. Mm. Because what I did, and what I did was for the national executives for us to meet and know what to do, then the information can get to the grassroots. Uh -huh. But he called somebody trying to, and that is what he has been doing. Mm. He, uh, listen, Dr. Mahama, you heard that somebody said Dr. Mahama stole five million, they gave five million and he took it. It was him. It was a Pasara who lied and to a, a reporter. So that is what he has been doing. I he see. does that to get people on his side, to use them against others. So, so, so bad. I so see. when I heard that, I also, thank, thanks be to God, I also used my audio. Mm -hmm. and also did an audio, there was no any case I did not use that if it is true, the God I serve should strike me, my family and everything that is mine. And if it is not true, may he strike the person who inculcated this lie, then the guy ran away. Would you consider yourself problematic? That, uh -huh. So in all these things that you are saying, number one, I never went to CTFM, it was, they went. Number two, I never organized any meeting to suspend anybody, they did. And then the rights I'm telling you about, Look at the issues and the situations I'm talking. Look, politics, Ghanaian po politics, eh, Ghanaian politics is a place where when you go and you see the truth, you keep quiet. If you want to better this country, then you will be picked as the bad person. If you want things to be straight, you will be picked as the bad person. Mm. Because I thought that we, we are going to do things the way it was supposed to do. So whatever I called, and when I call, the next minute somebody will come to, uh, to the platform and just misinterpret everything I told. And then the shocking aspect was that myself and him have ever gone to no, someone. So, so the question then will be, why you? No, he saw me. He was a threat. I was a threat to him because we made them vote for him. He knew no, he couldn't have been able to win. Without us, Apasada would not be anyone in the PNC. He wouldn't have. So we made him to win. When he came, he saw that... Mm, Janet is the one who has power over these people. I want to be a leader who is also having power. So the only thing I can do is to sideline Janet. So that is why he and his uh, cohorts, they sat together and manufactured whatever you saw over there. I see. It's not like, do you know that I met him at Afrikiko and I told him that, I don't know why you don't like me. I don't know why all these things are happening. Uh -huh. If I've committed a crime against you, please forgive me. 
And what did he say to you? Wait. And I said, and if I did something I don't know, tell me so that I can apologize. He said, no, I didn't do anything. And I said, okay. But you don't talk to me, and I'm hearing a lot of issues. He said, oh, no, 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 nothing. Uh, it's okay. He'll see what he can do. So I told Daniba. When I told Daniba, Daniba was happy. And he said, okay, then write a meeting so that we will meet and see how we can trash things out. I wrote the meeting uh, uh, time and everything on uh -huh. the platform. I was there. Daniba called me that David said he will not uh, have any meeting with you. So the people who were advising him that he should remove me and become powerful, no, they were those. Let me tell you something. Women are the most powerful tools in this country. If you're a man and you want to grow, respect them. If you're a husband and you want to have money, respect your wife. There is nothing you can do in this world when you are antagonistic or you are fighting against women that you will succeed. Mm. That man is not a leader. God never created him to be a leader. And you will soon see him the way God created him before he forced himself into leadership. I mean, what, how do you think God created him? He created him to be a follower. Because the trouble on him is too much. He has no one single leadership quality. And, but you he made him, you look made at him how, the 2020 flag bearer. Ah, they made him the 20. Because to me, dear, I told uh, Dr. Mahama, who brought him as his candidate, I told him, a time came when I told Dr. This man is not the man. Because how can I go and be campaigning for you and you'll be telling the people that they should vote for another person. You won't work with me. And I heard all these things. I told mm. Dr. said, it's okay. He's my candidate. Mm. So before the elections, I knew that I was uh, with trouble. In fact, people called me. This man, this is how he is. Can you work with him? And I said, I cannot work with him, but Dr. Mahama says he's the candidate. Would you consider yourself problematic? I asked, I will never. I asked that question. Because, I will never. I will never. Because, because oh. no, hang on, hang on, Janet. Uh, you know, at the, at the time Moses Daniba and uh, David Apasera were announcing uh, the interim, uh, you know, uh, Secretary General, your supporters went there to ensure that that didn't happen. They went to cause mayhem over there. It has n it never happened. It never happened. The only thing that happened was that they said they were holding a meeting. They, the day that they said uh, they suspended me, the following day they were holding, or two days later they were holding a meeting. And I told them that um, as a general secretary, that meeting will not come on. So I went there to also enter to hear what they were doing. And then the police were there and they said that, oh, I should wait, blah, 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 blah. They were, it's not like we went there to cause No, but me. what did you go there to do? You were because not invited. I'm invited. Is my, I was going to my office. I was ah. going to my office because my office is there. I was not told that there was a meeting. Even if there is a meeting, nobody can do a meeting without my knowledge and also prevent me from entering into my office. So whilst I was going to my office, the police came in and then they also came out. And that was where the bruhaha started. It's not like I just um, went there purposely to cause me harm. No, mm. I went there to enter into my office legitimately after they illegitimately inleg uh, said they suspended mm -hmm. me. So uh, that one day. Mm. I did not cause, I'm not problematic at all. Not In, at all. I see. Mm. I will come back to this conversation. We will talk a bit more about the, the problem between the PNC that has, among the PNC members mm. that has led to uh, the, the PMP being formed. But we'll also look at what it appears to be a repeat of history. Mm. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My guest today is Janet Asana Nabla, who is chairperson for the newly formed People's National Party. Now, Janet, I, I, again, let's look at uh, the issue ha that has brewed in the PNC for a long time now um, and, and consider the fact that it would appear history is repeating itself when you look at the case of uh, uh, Dr. Tobiga. Uh, some team to in 2012 when you know he too was ousted out of the party like that and he had to um he also took the matter to court over and over again the pnc d doesn't seem to know how to keep or it, its house in order and all this while you were trying to convince the ghanaian people to give you ghana the problem is that it's one particular set of people you know this uh David Apasara, Sintim Tobuga, uh, the one who died, what was the name, uh, Ndebugri, mm. they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they were friends. Mm. And they think that the only way by which they can solve problems is to go to the court. So everything, in fact, he took us to about four or five different courts for us to, every blessed day, like to frustrate. I don't know, like 
So we were in that court. Mm. In fact, uh, uh, Ndebugre took doctor to so many different courts. Sintin Tubuga took doctor to four different courts. This man took us to so many different courts. I think that the PNC, ever since its inception till now, have been on a self a, a, a what you call it, self destruction mood, mm. and I think that yeah, 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 it has been in self destruction mood because I don't see why a political party can have a uh, difficulties and the leader of the party doesn't know that we have elders in the party, he doesn't respect anybody. In fact, I remember some time ago someone asked him from Joy that ah, but uh, uh, Janet, your general secretary, he said, Janet, who, who is general secretary? I don't, I don't regard her, I don't mm. recognize her. So if you say these things to me because mm. I don't know the reason why you are saying it, do you know how I regard you? You think that because we are women and you're a man, you're an important person? There are men that women respect and there are men they look down upon. And he's one of the people that I don't give much respect to. Mm. Because a, a person who have no respect for women, a person when he sees a woman, he want to look down on. As we, you, so you think all of this has to do with you being a woman above yeah and being powerful mm. and he's scared i had something he wanted i had the people all over me mm. when i call them they are ready to do whatever i, I, I ask them to right. do and he wanted that power and the only way he could get it was to formulate all this things. right so so you tell me that you didn't you know lead the organization of pmp the organization was a uh, national executive uh, committee members mm. they were those who came together and then we uh, informed this. They informed me and said, want you to be the leader, blah, 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 blah. Just, and I just, said, just like that, why do you know, think they chose you? They chose me because I was with them. That is my caucus. Mm. Because they said there is no way. Look, even prior to that, we were thinking of changing the name PNC. Because we've seen that the party name has been a case to not only ourselves, to the country. Because a country that is looking for a political party to solve its problems, constantly being in court. It's not a political party that Ghana is the same. So we wanted to even change the name altogether Already. to give peace to the people of Ghana so that those who like that name know and are the trouble causes in that party, mm. the, you know that the same person we are talking about, he took a, 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 this in the party to court, 2016, Apasada. Mm. He took the party to court, preventing us from going to Congress. And when he did not succeed, and we went to Congress and came back, he continued the law this in against us. So it's right. not... So, 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 I mean, let's, let's leave Apasara in the past, right? Let's talk about how you became chairperson for the, uh, you know, two months old... Uh, well, not even two months old, because you got a prov provisional certificate on Tuesday. <laughs> so it's just a few days old, uh, PMP. But the fact that you could jump straight to become the leader of this mm. uh, rogue PNC members... Rook. It, it's rook because no, you, you have drawn yourself from what no, so is. What is the meaning of rook? Well, ask you because I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a, a, a right way to be okay. used for us. Okay. Because the people that you have seen there that form the PMP are the are the true PNC members. Apasada is not having anybody. He had nobody with him as we speak now. Mm -hmm. The true PNC members that were with Liman when the PNC was formed, with the, uh, when the, he was with the PMP, they are those. We are talking about the regional chairman for mm. Eastern Region. We talk about the Central Regional Chairman. We talk about Northern Regional Chairman. We talk about his own region, Upper East, the Regional Chairman, Baba, uh, this in, uh, Alaji Baba Mohammed, who just died. They all ran away and, and formed, and, and, they are those. And, and they all chose you. Chose me. So you were already gunning for the PNC chairperson position. No, it's not a not? matter of gunning. I wasn't uh, gunning for any a PNC chairmanship position. Mm. I wanted things to work. I just wanted this uh, fighting and things to just cease. I just wanted somebody who is actually a leader, someone who is not a vindictive person, somebody who knows the road to this thing. I just wanted that and, and you nothing thought, else. you thought that person was only you? As a, no, no, you know, no. While, while you were no, they, working they, with... No, not that. The person, I've not seen the person in PNC. There's nobody in PNC with the qualities I have mentioned. Mm. And more to the point, that particular political party had become toxic mm. and it's not worth it. And the PNP was formed mm. by people who have been with Liman, people who have been with the PNC. They are those who left and came and formed the PNP. I see. So, so, the PMP. so does the PNC still exist? And I'm asking because... So. Is dead now. Ah, 
Me, I don't think so. To me, the, if electoral commission will want to go in to look for the national executive, regional executive, and constituency, it will not stand the, this in the test of time. So, to me, the, I don't think it is still existing. And mm. it all happened because of greed. And, and it's, it's because the PMP has taken it. We've taken it because, yeah, we said we won't regional. allow, we won't let a judge tell us who should rule us. We won't I do see, that. I because, see. Uh, uh, and help us to resist all oppressors rule. Mm. That's what we took. So now you and have we are the following PMP. the constitution, constitution to be able to do that. You have a constitution already? No, I'm saying that we are following the Ghana's constitution. Okay. All and right. resisted oppressors rule. Okay. So, so here's my question to you. How is the PMP different from the PNC, apart from, you know, the problems that you have indicated? In terms of ideology, how are you different? When you look at the people, I don't think the PNC, I don't know, but like, when you look at the People's National Party being the PMP, our ideology is, we are talking about, even our slogan, we said, my family, my community, my motherland. We are talking about a political party that is, uh, that believes in communitarianism. We don't believe in this individual way of putting all power in the hands of an individual or minority to now become the, the heads and then to distribute it to others. We don't believe in that. Because Ghana, that is what we have used, and that is the reason why we are in these uh, challenges that we are now mm. uh, finding ourselves. Right. When you talk about family, family bond, uh, this in bonds, if you remove a family bond, then it becomes difficult for a country to grow. In our African uh, culture or our uh, traditional settings, mm -hmm. but we have done away with the family. Mm -hmm. Ghana, we are no more interested in family. We are no more interested in our communities. We are interested in me, 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 how to uh, galvanize wealth for ourselves without thinking about the common interest of all. That is why the PMP we come in. We are saying that enough is enough. If you build a family, you are building a country. When you build a community, you are building a country. Look at what happened at Winneba. It is something that all of us should reflect, that a community can see some, a woman crying, and that community will stand aloof and wait for that woman to die. Mm. It's a case to all of us. And so we think that our system or, or the ideologies uh, of the two political parties that have taken over did not help Ghana, Ghana. and is not helping us. Hey. So it, it, you're saying that now, but the PNC has in the past aligned with uh, you know, the NDC. Uh, you know, during the elections. Is that not the case? Did you not know then that they couldn't help Ghana? The, or it, was, the, it wasn't the, your decision? The ideology of the PNC, they are social, uh, this in, uh, this in, they are also the social something, something types. So they were aligning with NDC mm. because the ideologies, uh, they are the same. Mm. But with the PNP, we said that our ideology is commun uh, communitarianism. We are not into... Uh, 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 social left so you won't be aligning with anybody? No, 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 we will not be aligning with anybody. We'll talk a bit because more we about cannot, mm -hmm. we can't align with any of the two political parties. We'll talk more a bit about, you know, your ideology, but I, I want to look at the party structure now. You are the uh, national chairperson. Yes. I believe that you have national executives. Yes, we have the general secretary, uh -huh. that is uh, Sule. We have the uh, communication secretary, that is Ayensu. We have mm. Francis Opong. We have Abu Kadri, we have... And, and you have everything, but how many, how many members uh, have you drawn from across the country? Oh, the truth is that apart from the national executives, the regional executives, we have constituency executives too. And then we are now into the polling, uh, polling set, uh, sector uh, this in executives. So we are looking for our polling uh, centers, they are executives. And, you, and you got all of these over what period? You know, for instance, you are a regional chairman, you left the uh, PM yes. in this, and then your constituency executive said, we will follow you, chairman. We are not going anywhere. We are PMP. If you, whether you contest or not, we are standing solidly behind you because we believe that you are fighting a good fight, and we want this country to change. To do that, we must follow people who align the, with the our vision. The PMP set on a course to destroy the PNC, and it will seem you have achieved that. We, we, we have not. We have not. Because if you have someone who is not a peacemaker and doesn't want to bring together, then we will go away and then form a political party mm. whereby it will, uh, it, will fight, it will contest elections and win. But Our main aim is not to be going through elections every time and then become opposition members. That is not the reason why the PMP was But perhaps won. we shouldn't jubilate too soon uh, because 
what you have now is a provisional certificate. Mm. There's still one step before the final certificate is and given. And it, it will be done and before you know it. Because well, well, but, but then that step is also crucial because yeah. it, 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 the Electoral Commission yes. will have to ensure that there's no objection to the formation of your party. Uh, it, would have to, it, it would have to uh, uh, print, make sure that, you know, publish that this party wants to name itself this and that and that. And if there is no objection over a 30-day period then it can give you the final certification. But uh, uh, objection to what? Uh, perhaps the PNC people. You see, uh, you know when you are objecting, I know very well that uh, some people think that they can use any unapproved rules to get what they want. But this time around, whether through the court, through wherever the person will, will pass through, we will let the media know whatever is going on. If the PMP cannot exist, then the Electoral Commission should take over the P a CPP, the addition, their powers. Because both the PMP and the C a CPP were both banned. So that is why uh, other political parties sprang up. But when the CPP went to court, the, 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 the court said that, no, there is no dissent. All uh, the Third Republic is gone. Mm. So any political party in the Third Republic that anyone wants to use the name, they can use it. So that is why the CPP is now there. So, well, if, well, I, so I, I guess what I'm driving at is why didn't you wait to get the final certificate and then you can make the uh, proper announcement of uh, No, the, the final, pro when you say the final uh, certificate, what do you mean? The because fact what that you have now is a provisional certificate. Yes. You need the Electoral Commission to give you the final certificate. And they will. You're because very we sure are going, I'm sure, so, because we are going to do the right thing. Mm. We don't pass through unapproved rules. You see, a lot of people have no idea who we are. They think that somebody can bank roll or something. It doesn't happen. Because we, where we passed and where we got our certificate, nobody, we never, forming a political party, we've never, apart from who? Apart from Dr. Edward Mahama that we informed that, and we informed him mm. the day they were even, when they called me to tell me, right. I had to tell him. So I called him on phone and then I said that this is what the leaders of your uh, of the PNC are saying that they want to form a new political party. They are giving me this position and I want to ask, should I take it? Then he asked, do you like it? And I said, why not? Mm. He said, okay, you can go ahead. That's and all he thought about breaking away from the PNC? That is what he told me. Mm. And so I accepted it. So at the end of the day, it's not like uh, someone somewhere like the way people are this and nobody can be able to influence mm. us. I, I haven't insinuated that. Mm -hmm. all I'm asking no, I'm talking is about a uh, um, I'm just talking about those who said they want to, uh, I think Apasari and his group, I heard them saying that, oh, they would, no, 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 you can bring your, maybe your decision, uh, decision. Mm -hmm. you can bring a petition, but when the petition is not holding water, no court, no one will accept that decision, so you waste your I time. See. And more to the point, we know that the CPNC, they are serial uh, litigants, their main aim in that party is to go to court. That's what they do. They cannot organize. They have not paid their party rent. They don't know that one. They don't have any uh, uh, regional office. They have nothing. Mm. They are not a political party. But their interest is to be going to court. That is what we, are, we know them for. So mm. I am, we are ready 100%. Look at you being a, this, a, a man. You can be able to use your manly decision to go and solicit for fans to go to court. Mm -hmm. And I am a woman. I cannot do that. Please, we are ready to, uh, listen, to, to go to court with them. When, with if the, they want to go to court, we are ready to, to, to do it. When you finally get the, you know, the certificate, the final certificate, the Electoral Commission will expect you to show them your books. And by that, I mean the accounts of the part, party within 90 days. What would you be showing them? The accounts of the books. Mm. Then we've not yet opened a party account. Now the provisional certificate mm. gives us opportunity to open uh, an account mm. so that uh, at the end of the day... So the party has money? No. The party, a political party that we don't do business, mm -hmm. but we solicit for funds. Mm -hmm. Not from places uh, where people listen. The PMP, we said we are not going to uh, uh, this, uh, mortgage this party into the hands of people who are detractors of this country. We will not do that. We will let the ordinary Ghanaian owe the PMP. And that is what we've been doing. One city, two city, we gather all of them and we use it to do marvelous things. For as much as we are not going to spend the money, we are spending it on the PNC and growing the party. We are happy so about that. So here's where I'm going to that. Because opening your books also you know, includes showing the uh, Electoral Commission the assets that the party has. Mm. 
and you'll be presenting assets that used to be PNC's assets. No, no, no. Uh, for instance, PNC, they have never had any assets before. They have nothing. They don't have any assets. For instance, if I give you my building, the building is mine. I gave it to you. And you did not pay, so there's no any contract between myself and you. Do you understand? Mm. So when I take it away, it is not your asset. They don't have any assets. So now they it's have the, nothing. Is the PNC's that, problem yeah, to yeah. go and withdraw those assets that they may have no, which, presented to the electoral commission? No, for instance, if I'm with your party and I'm no more, I pick, I go away with my asset because you did not pay me. I gave it to you willingly, and I can take it back. So they don't yeah, have so, any so assets. What, what, what I'm talking about, do you not worry that the assets you may present to the Electoral Commission will be the same that the PNC perhaps already has on the books there? Uh, no, so that is why I'm saying that the, uh, the Electoral Commission will have to go around doing auditing on oh. the PNC mm. to see whether it even warrant. You see, while they are going to court, we are also writing a petition to Electoral Commission to, to take their... Uh, that uh, certificate from them. When are you they doing that? Oh, no, we are waiting. Mm. We are, our people have also planned. We are waiting. Because electoral commission must do that and let them go through the normal decent to see because they are not a political party. And so if, if a party that is not a political party has power to be sending people to court, we will be able to come out and let Ghanaians mm. know that electoral commission must do its work by making sure that this PNC, it has a, 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 even a party, a, a, this in, a party headquarters. They don't have. Have they paid their rent? Are they planning to sack them from that place? Do they have any regional office? Where is their constituency? The electoral commission would like to know. You I see? see. Uh -huh. I see. But, uh, you know, the party, the PMP has already talked about Congress and choosing a presidential, uh, you know, candidate. It sounds a bit, you know, too soon and putting the cart before the horse. But uh, w what kind of presidential candidates will the party be presenting to the Ghanaian people? Somebody who is trustworthy, mm -hmm. someone who is transparent, someone who knows the challenges Ghanaians are facing, and someone who is ready to, uh, to be a strong leader. Because Ghana, we don't need strong institutions. We just need strong leaders that can be able to implement those institutions. And that is the type of person they... Are people they, showing interest? Are you showing interest? Oh, yes. People are showing uh, interest. Does people it include showing, you? Oh, uh, I've not said anything. But I know that people are showing interest. Okay. Uh, we have uh, one doctor from KNUSD. Okay. Uh, he has shown interest. And then we have another uh, person. He's a business person. Okay. Uh, so he has also shown interest, but we told them that they should wait. We're even thinking that uh, whilst we are uh, uh, running 100 meters to do the right thing, they can also start uh, maybe campaigning because mm. we don't have enough time. So okay. we have people who are showing interest. The PMP, people don't understand. We are not here to joke. We are here to I, take I, over I, the I, realms of this country. I understand that. Um, so, so then, when do you plan to go to Congress? Oh, July. In July? In July. Okay. In two weeks' time, we'll be done with Electoral Commission. Whatever they want will be done. Are you fielding parliamentary candidates? Across the 275 constituencies. We are doing a 200 and... Uh, we are going on a 275 uh, constituency tour. And whilst we are doing that, we are picking our parliamentary candidates. So, I mean... This transparent person that you hope that the, uh, um, you know, the PMP will present to the Ghanaian people, that transparent person was also a part of the PNC at the time, and you didn't uh, present that person to us. Oh, no. So you see, um, when I say a transparent person and blah, 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 I'm just saying that this is the type of leader that the uh, PMP will present to Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. Want leaders who are transparent, who are... Who, can, who are trustworthy, team mm -hmm. players, leaders who can be able to stand on their uh, uh, toes to be able to do the right thing for mm -hmm. the people of Ghana. Those are the type of leaders that the PMP is going to galvanize for. I see. Mm -hmm. We'll come back, we'll discuss the uh, issues to do with uh, community and family. Mm -hmm. But then we'll also take the PMP's position on certain national issues. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My guest today is Chairperson of People's National Party, PNP, Janet Asana Nabla. Thank you so much for your patience, uh, Chairperson. Well, let's focus solely on the PNP now. Yes. You have talked about community and family issues. Yes. 
what are those issues you want to tackle specifically? You see, when you have a, a family that is well uh, built and everything is okay with that fa family, mm -hmm. there will be a decent uh, remittance from that family to their community. And when you have a community that is well built, then that community can be able to contribute to, the, uh, to national development. But that is not what we are doing as a country. We said we are building individuals. Mm -hmm. And the PMP, we are saying that building individuals, which is an alien uh, tradition to our culture, we right. don't know distance. We were born into a family. We were born into a community where anyone can correct anybody in that community, where the welfare of each and every one of mm. us matters, where when one person is and another person is going to sleep uh, with hunger, it is not but, right. But what is the proposal to ensure that people uh, you know, behave in a community way than being in the individualistic? What is the uh, Policy we, proposal for so that. the policy proposal has to do with as a setting up a, a community a councils whereby people can go there and meet, talk about their issues, and then it goes into the uh, 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 national level, mm. and then those things are provided. See policies, great, uh, this, uh, most of the policies that we've brought in place are great policies, policies that will be able to help us. But because we do it like it is government who is doing it. Look at free SHS. People don't even align with it. They think that it is the MPP, their policy. But policies which are nationalistic must first start from the community. Mm. We are bringing a free SHS. How do you see it? How can we implement it in your community? The community have different traditions, they have different cultures, and then the way they handle their things are different from when you go to another community. Allow the community to come out with the way they think free uh, SHS can benefit them. When you do that and it becomes a community thing, when something is going wrong, it is the community that will help in making sure that they I mean, strengthen so, it. I mean, using the example of the Free Senior High School, what difference could have the involvement of the community made on the implementation of the Free Senior High School? For instance, we have a free SHS. This thing should have been, dis uh, been discussed at the community level. When the community is a part of the decision-making process and then government comes out with the policy mm. and there are problems within, they are seeing di uh, these difficulties or uh, challenges within the policy. The people in the community are those who even say that we will do this. Is, there, is, for is there a problem you see now that the involvement of the community could have solved? You know, the community is sitting aloof in all uh, our decision uh, in all the policies that they bring, community sits like this, and it's like government do this, it's like do this, do as if they are not part, mm. you see. And then at the end of the day, it is Ghana that is deteriorating under the umbrella of the dual political parties we have. Mm -hmm. Because they know very well that this issue that we are talking about is a systemic issue, mm. systemic failure from the family, from the community. But because of politics, we ignore all those things, and then we are hammering on things that are not helping us. So we think that with the community being involved in whatever we do as a country. Mm -hmm. Families are involved. For instance, look at farming. People think that farmers, uh, listen, oh, a farmer's child, somebody will say that, oh, one day you become a doctor, eh? you become a lawyer. Eh? So the child grows up not trying to learn what the father knew how to do. Mm -hmm. We had great farmers who are dead now, and then they took their turn away. Because none of the family members mm -hmm. have learned how to farm. As a result, everyone is looking for white color jobs. Our, when we talk about training the family to also be in the community and contributing, why won't you allow, uh, we are not saying that all a farmers, a farmers' children, all of them should become doctors mm -hmm. or nurses, mm -hmm. but some of them, no matter what, must learn. And the community, we must have people who will talk to them and then orient their mind right. to know that I'm going to farming. My dad was a peasant farmer. I am going to do commercial farming. Mm. We should do that. Most of the problems we have now is as a result of losing everything and trying to copy the South, uh, the I West. See. I see. One of the things that you, uh, you know, the party touched on in his uh, uh, inaugural speech w when he announced the certificate is the economy and how you hope to rebuild the economy by controlling prices. I mean, uh, how effective do you think that would be? You see, it is so shocking that we are operating a free market economy mm -hmm. and essential goods, of, uh, goods and services are escalating, prices are escalating, and we are not doing anything about it. 
in the PMP government, we, we are saying that we are going to uh, this in, uh, introduce price control. Because we need price control in this country. Uh, for instance, goods, uh, this in, goods like food, mm -hmm. we are talking about fuel. We are talking about uh, uh, which ones you could have? Fu uh, fuel, uh, health, because some people, they go to uh, private uh, health institutions. So we talk about health, mm. we talk about food, we talk about fuel, we talk about what? There are certain things that the PMP government, we will introduce price control to make sure that the prices are lower for the ordinary Ghanaian to be able to purchase. Are you of the opinion the free market is the reason uh, you know, these things are expensive, for instance, food, which Ma is really... You see, majority mm -hmm. of the problems we are uh, uh, facing today has to do with uh, free market economy. Mm -hmm. People buy goods and price them the way they want. In fact, I went to uh, China Mall, and a chair was 68 Ghana cities. Guta and eight members are selling it for 175 Ghana cities in the market. That was what just... And then I was wondering, is it not the same pot that usually uh, uh, they all uh, take their goods from? So how come that other places, the price is like this, and other places, the prices are different? Do you know that in our various markets, mm -hmm. they have formed unions, which is good. When you form a union, you form a union to make maybe things better. And yeah, then but to but also... I, I mean, for the Guta case, they've made the point that their problem is much more nuanced. The foreign exchange uh, situation, which affects so much... Uh, cities they need to buy dollars they have talked about the access to funds and all that that surely it must, is, it must is, play it a is, role it is not playing any role mm -hmm. and i also blame government ineptitude in this issue because under a pmp government this will not happen you are going to buy something you buy it we know the prices you come back here we tell you that this is how much you bought it this is the amount of tax we are going to put on this is the price we are giving to you you make this a uh, number of profit if you will not agree to do it then you stop uh, this in importing and don't you because think that will stifle private uh, you know businesses and contract see, the uh, private sector you see you see something mm -hmm. we are not building private businesses to make the living standard of the 30 million Ghanaians a living hell yeah. Ghanaians are suffering. How can someone get up in the morning without having opportunity to get three square meal? Just because someone wants to make a abnormal profit. I'm saying that if we were in government today, mm. our minister of trade will not just be in the office, but he will make sure that prices, goodest people who go to buy. We are not going to take your prices you brought with your decent. We are going to make sure that we check the prices where you bought them from. Mm. How much you bought them? and how much we think you can put on it. Because majority of the inflation we are talking about comes from food and other prices. I see. And do you know what is even more painful? Our locally produced food, when they increase lorry fare one CD, and you see the amount of, because of ignorance and other things, you see the amount of money they are putting in it. It is usually a decent. It is usually so much. Mm. And then you, you see our markets. Now when you go, tomato sellers, they have a union. Uh, salt sellers, they have a union. All the major things we are buying, they have unions. And the union is to increase prices. What will the PMP do about the health sector and, and the you know, challenges we face there? Like which, one, which of the challenges? I mean, for instance, we see the situation with the uh, kidney dialysis issues. You we see, see issues with the National Health Insurance uh, or, I think authority. that the MPP and the NDC is going to drive this country into a situation that at the end of the day will not be able to have any solution to the numerous uh, problems we have. For instance, kidney uh, dialysis are one of the... It, it, is, it, is, it is capital intensive. Mm. And the NHIS, to me, cannot be able to afford it. But they did politics about it. When they were talking about kidney problems and things, you see the opposition putting pressure. And the and government also got up and said he's going to uh, uh, provide free uh, dialysis for patients. To mm. me, it's a good thing, especially the children. If you are providing free dialysis for our future generation, I'm okay with it. Mm. But they said they are now providing it for people who are 60 years and above. For what? And then they are, uh, this in, they are uh, also helping to pay some of their, which is a good thing. But do you know that it can deprive our children from getting schools to go? It can deprive us from getting good roads to ply on. Wait, so should they do it, it, it or not? To me, uh -huh. I don't think it's a good venture to venture on. The thing they should do is to make sure that they uh, 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 come out with a campaign 
good, a healthy eating, how mm. to avoid cardiovascular disease. To prevent disease. it. To prevent it, that is what they should do. But to put all the money in Ghana into offering free dialysis, this is one of the things that they have done that I think that it will, the health sector will soon be on its knees mm. because there won't be I money see. to be well, able to do that. What is the PMP's position on a uh, SNES sale of 60% of this uh, interest in some hotels to Rock City Hotels Limited? The PMP will object the sales of government property to individual hands. Mm. And this one, I think that the perpetrators of this kind, you see, they did uh, some demonstration. We were not part of the demonstration. We were not part because that demo, uh, this thing, the way they captured it, we did not fit in. Why? What was wrong with the way because they Because Senate properties, hotels were sold under the NDC regime. And I wanted to write on a placard, Operation vote MPP and NDC out. Wait, but they were sold. And were they then, sold to. Le, do you know something? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. They were sold to sympathizers. It doesn't matter. Ah, I see. They were sold to their party sympathizers. And that is not how we should run a country. None of them who did the demonstration had a moral right to be there. When we talk about, uh, if, uh, listen, uh, what you call it, talking about people who are somehow hypocritical, you who sold things, another person has also come. Instead of you to allow the PMP to come out and chastise the two of you. You were there at Placas and Brian Champong. What about the hotels you also sold? I so see. we are here saying that see. MPP so, and NDC in this election 2024 mm. should be voted out because they don't deserve Ghana's so, NDC. What is the strategy the PMP hopes to employ, employ to convince the Ghanaian people to vote for them? You see, um, we have now for vis uh, visibility, we have decided that we are going to uh, go through we are going to go through the various regions. Mm -hmm. So with the various, we have also already started with the preparation because this party is not here to joke. Mm -hmm. We are here to be able to win. So regionally, we want to have our people going around uh, this in uh, the various regions through uh, uh, maybe spinners, door-to-door mm -hmm. -door campaigns, telling people to vote for I the see. party. And apart from those ones, we are also intending to come out with policies because if you are campaigning without having the right policies, people will not vote for you. Mm. So we are now working on our, uh, this in, our policy direction to come out so that at the end of the day, Ghanaians will see that the PMP deserve to be voted for. I see. And that we, the rule of but, MPP but, but and you, NDC you have come to an end. They are regime. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But if you tell us all of these things, the question the Ghanaian people will ask is, what is your track record? Why should we trust you? Our track record, we just came. Mm. We, we don't just, have... We, no, when you talk about track re record, mm. we came. When, before Nkrumah won, what track record was he having? Before all those who won and brought great change to their community, what uh, this in, track record were they having? We have people who have track record. MDC were in power, they left. MPP were in power, they left. They came back, they left, they came back. And with the track record, they've not helped us. Why should we trust people who have track record to lead this country? Mm. They have failed us. We have seen it time and before. And we think that the time has come for Ghanaians to now give the PMP the chance mm. to show them what we can do. They should not look for track record. Those who have it have failed. Why won't we give another person the chance to come? Janet, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for coming. Me too. Thank you too. My guest today has been Janet Asana Nabla. She is chairperson for the newly formed People's National Party. I'll see you same time next week. Bye-bye.